actually appreciate both songs. That is a good song. But the first song could not have been better picked for the message tonight. Because we are going to talk about, out of Psalm 23 tonight, He leadeth me beside still waters. And we just sang, uh, All my life long I had panted for a draught from some cool spring that I hoped would quench the burning of the thirst I felt within. Verse 4, Well of water ever springing, bread of life so rich and free, untold wealth that never faileth, my Redeemer is to me. Hallelujah, I have found Him, whom my soul so long has craved. Jesus satisfies my longings. Through His blood I now am saved. So in Psalm 23 tonight, we're going to be looking at the still waters out of uh, verse number 2. And so very fitting song, and I hope that you have found that stream. And um, I want to talk to you tonight about the still water. So let's read together Psalm 23. Remember, we're memorizing this psalm together. And so uh, every week I'm going to read the whole thing to, to kind of help you. Uh, repetition is the key to memorization. That's really all there is to it is just uh, saying it over and over and over, reading it over and over and over. So I'll read the whole thing tonight uh, and then uh, keep working on it. Try to memorize it. I know that it would be a blessing to you. All right, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So let's pray together. We'll get right into our lesson tonight. Lord, we are so grateful to be in your house. And Father, I'm thankful for your word. And um, I'm thankful for the truth that we find here in Psalm 23. And uh, Lord, the fact that you do lead us beside still waters, you care for our spiritual health. And so, Lord, I pray that we learn something tonight from your word, um, something very practical that we can take with us even tomorrow or even tonight um, that we can use um, to help us to grow in you and, in, and to strengthen our walk with you. And uh, so, Lord, I pray you'd help. I pray you'd help us as we listen, but I also pray you'd help me as I speak. Lord, give me the words to say, and Lord, guide every, every portion of the lesson. In Jesus' name, amen. So remember, we've been through uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And uh, we, we've looked at the first couple of lines, or the first line of, of verse 2, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. And tonight is, He leadeth me beside the still waters. And we do think of these two verses, we typically sort of group them together in our mind because they're all related to the Lord's provision. The Lord is my shepherd. So we, we've identified him as Jehovah God, Jesus Christ in the New Testament. He is our Lord. He is our shepherd. He is the one watching over and caring for the flock. This phrase, I shall not want, has to do with his provision, but it has more to do with how we feel about his provision, or, or we could say our contentment with his uh, provision. So the, the fact that we, uh, well, I, I'll just say it like this, um, even if we have a lot, we can still be wanting, right? Even if we have a lot of, of goods, um, we, we, we still have something in us that always seems to want something else. And so the, the idea I shall not want really has to do with our contentment in such things as we have. Then we looked at the green pastures. In the green pastures last week, we looked at that God maketh me to lie down in green pastures. God, the good shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ, provides everything that we need that we might rest in him. Remember, the, the, the point of that phrase is the, the sheep lying down, taking rest. And, and that's hard to do in 2023. But if we follow the Lord closely, we're in his fold. He provides all the necessity that we might have rest, even in the midst of, of trials. You know, peace, they say, is not the absence of war. Peace is not the absence of conflict. Peace is being with Jesus in the, that conflict. And so uh, remember, as the disciples went across the, the uh, sea and the Lord, the, there was this big tempest and a storm going on. Where was the Lord? Asleep on a pillow. So he gives us this example that you can rest 
even in the midst of storms, because the Lord provides what's necessary for that. So tonight we're going to look at then the next phrase, He leadeth me beside the still waters. And so tonight, first of all, let's look at the necessity of water. The necessity of water. It goes without saying that all life requires water. If you've ever uh, tried to um, have a garden or, like me, a, a potted plant, um, I can't keep a cactus alive for some reason, and they don't even re- require all that much water. But um, apparently, I'm just I'm just the worst at at growing things. Um, it's never been my thing. I, but but everything needs water. Everything that has life requires water, and when water is dry, life begins to go away. So this this water uh, may be the most precious resource for the sheep. In fact. Most shepherding throughout the world actually takes place in pretty dry areas and dry climates. It's not, it's not necessarily how I thought it was when I was a kid that, uh, that, that sheep are always running around in green grass and, and have plenty of, of just everything's lush and green and moist. And uh, that's not always the case. In fact, in Israel, where this book would have been written, um, it would have been in this dry area of southern Israel where um, David is leading around his sheep. And so uh, we could picture a very dry climate. So it becomes very important then, and it's pretty dry here in Gillette, isn't it? I mean, I've only been here a couple of months, but I've heard, uh, you know, it's, it's a pretty dry area, pretty dry section of Wyoming. So you know what that's like. And you can imagine the antelope around here. They know every watering hole in the area. Couldn't you understand that? that they know where to go to find what they need uh, because they have, you know, traversed the area and, and, and it's a precious resource. So we have this idea that water is, ne- is necessary for life and a- a- as sheep are not as, um, uh, they're not as, uh, well, they're not as industrious as antelope and sheep, they rely on the shepherd to lead them to water. They're hundred percent dependent upon the shepherd to provide that. And so again, um, Sheep spending a lot of time in dry places need water. A good shepherd leads them to water. Now, we've already sort of covered, or really we've already covered the fact that the Lord is our shepherd and He provides our food and our raiment. You know, He provides our sustenance. He provides the physical things that we need, such as food and water. And so what we're talking about tonight is not necessarily our physical substance, our physical substance of water. Uh, it's actually uh, something else. The water that the good shepherd provides is a picture. It's a picture. It's a spiritual water. It's a picture of the Lord providing for our spiritual necessity. And I want to show you this in the scriptures. And I'm going to read a bunch of verses. We're not going to turn to these. I think I listed them off in your notes. Um, you can turn to them if you'd like, but there's quite a few. But I just want you to see that so many times, and I just picked a handful of verses, but so many times in the scriptures, the, the Bible likens um, our spiritual sustenance to water. Uh, the fact that we need a drink. Um, John chapter 4 and verse 5, uh, it says this, But whosoever, it's actually verse 14, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. This is Jesus speaking to that woman at the well. And she's coming. She's got her water pot. Uh, she's ready to, to, to get some water. And, uh, and, and he tells her, I've got water that you'll, if you drink it, you'll never thirst again. Well, was he talking about H2O? No. He was talking about himself. He was talking about a spiritual life that he could give her. In John chapter 6 and verse 35, Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. John 7 and verse 37, in the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. We have these comparisons in the scripture of the water being the word of God. Ephesians 5 and verse 26, he that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Jesus says in Revelation 21 and verse 6, And he said unto me, It is done. I am the Alpha. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of water of life freely. In the next chapter, Jesus says, or John says, And the Spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. 
So just as water is necessary for our, our body to function properly, so is spiritual sustenance necessary for the Christian to live and function properly. Some of those properly. Some of those verses that I mentioned speak of salvation. This, this woman at the well, she didn't need just a drink of water. She needed Jesus Christ. She needed salvation. So that's where it begins. But we find in our Christian walk that even after we're saved, we can get pretty spiritually parched. We can get pretty spiritually thirsty. In fact, there is a thirst that everybody on this earth has. Everyone is hungering. Everyone is thirsting. So we'll look at the reality of thirst. The reality of thirst. Everyone on this earth is trying to quench their thirst. Um, we are spiritual beings. God has created us in His image. And so we have a, a spirit and we, we are spiritual beings and we have the, this purpose given to us of serving and pleasing God. And so for those who don't know Christ, they're searching to fill that need, that void in their life. We would call it a thirst that they're trying to quench. Um, the problem is people in the world and, and sadly Christians even when they, they are thirsty don't always come to the right source of water. Jeremiah 2 and verse 13, the prophet said, for my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. So he say this, they're not coming to me and I'm the fountain of living waters. And he says this, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. So, so think about it for just a second. Um, we understand that, that people are, are longing for something in this world. We understand there's a, there's a, there's a pursuit going on in the heart of every individual on earth. And if that is not filled by the Savior, if that void in their life is not filled by the, the spiritual needs or, or the spiritual sustenance of the Savior, they, they will go after it some other way. We could list a, a hundred things that people are, are trying to use to quench their thirst. Um, things like career. Things like even family. Things like money. Things like sports. We could even talk about things like drugs and alcohol. Um, I hate to say it, but we could talk about social media. Do you know some people are trying to, I mean, they're, they're, they're getting their, their well, they're, they're searching for something and just, just scrolling on that phone is, is giving them, there's been studies done that, that scrolling on your phone gives you the same sort of effect that drugs give to you, this little dopamine release in your brain, and, and that's what keeps you scrolling and keeps you scrolling. And again, I'm not here to preach against all social media. I think it has its good points, and I'm on there, and um, I sometimes like it, sometimes I don't, but I'm on there. And, uh, but but we got to be careful that that's not where we're looking for our joy, where we're looking for our fulfillment. Um, it doesn't matter how many likes someone puts on your post. Don't you want those likes, though? I mean, just be honest. You put a picture of yourself. Look how cute I am. This thing should get 100 likes, you know? And, and then two people like it, and you're like, ah, you can't sleep that night. Listen, that's not where we get our fulfillment. It's not where we get our joy is, is not through social media. But, but sadly, much of our world, especially the younger generation, I mean, they're living this, this life that's not even a real life. They're living this life online, and, and they're trying to fill this void. It's just, it's just a thirst that they have. I read in Philip Keller's book, and, and he's a, he used to be a shepherd. I don't know if he still is. Uh, but in his book, he would talk about trying to lead uh, sheep to, to the water source. And so he knows there's this really nice, cool stream up ahead and, and with clear, slow-flowing water, perfect place for them to... To, to get all that they want and, and really to, to be sustained and to be satisfied. And so he's leading them there and, and, and he'll look back and, and some of the sheep won't be following and they'll kind of be bunched up in a group and he's thinking, what are they doing? So he walks back and sees what's going on. Well, they've stomped out a puddle in the mud and they're drinking from it because they're thirsty. This is a picture of us and what we do is the Lord's trying to lead us to the cool spring and and took some clear water that could sustain us. And, and yet, we're, man, the first mud hole we find sometimes, that's where we're trying to get our sustenance. There's a great spiritual picture here of how we try to fill the voids in our life that Jesus needs to be filling with other things. Solomon, we, we pointed this out in a previous service, so we won't go to Ecclesiastes 2, but you, it'd be good for you to read it again. Um, Solomon looked for satisfaction in every single thing that a person could look for satisfaction in. He comes to the end of it, he says it's vanity, 
and vexation of spirit. It is only when we are in the pasture with the good shepherd that we can truly find waters which satisfy. That's the only place we're going to find it. That's the only place that will be filled and we'll, we'll say it's enough. Now there's this principle, we won't, man, it just, so many things pop into my head, but there's this principle in Matthew and Jesus is talking about the, the blessed are the hungry for they shall be filled. Um, that's because the more you get of the Lord, guess what? The more you want of the Lord. And so he, he keeps pouring in, he keeps giving us this water, but this is what satisfies, it's Jesus Christ. So um, I want to look then tonight at three sources of still waters. So in my study here, and again, I, this study is kind of different because I'm really, the study is, is Psalm 23 and it's word study and it's contextual study of what's going on in the passage, but it's also a study of how to raise sheep. I feel like I need a herd of them uh, to do a little casework during the week. And, and kind of figure out what's going on. But anyway, I've, I'm trying to learn from other shepherds, and I've, I've learned that there's essentially three places in which a, a, a sheep can, can get water. Sheep will not drink. Um, you know, you can't take a sheep over to a Class 5 Rapids and, and lead them up to the side and drink. They won't do it. They're scared of that. And so, uh, the, like, foamy, tumultuous water, it won't do. And so the verse says here, He leadeth me beside the still waters. I believe that our Lord, the Good Shepherd, knows which waters are drinkable. And I found three sources um, that I think have some good spiritual insights. And so the first one we're going to look at is the early morning dew. Now this is something that you may not think about, um, but I, I was talking to a farmer a few years ago, and I, I like using farming examples. Jesus used a lot of farming examples if you read the Gospels. Um, because so much about our, our Christian walk is what? It's sowing the seed, right? It's seeing a harvest. It's, it's the Lord's seed. Is it, is it taking root in our heart? That kind of thing. So, so farmers are, have been a big help to me just understanding that. And where we lived in Texas, that's what it was. Everything was farming. And, and um, uh, it had been a while since we had had a rain. I was talking to one of our farmers, and, and I said, man, we could sure use a rain. And he said this. He said, or even a good do. You know, I was reading this week with our kids. They're trying to fill out those footballs. Who, who did that? Was that you with the footballs? Was that Miss Amy? Miss Amy. So they're trying to fill up those footballs. So we're reading with them in Genesis and, and trying to get them some footballs filled up, which is good. Um, but we read this week in Genesis how before the flood it had never rained and the whole earth was watered by the mist of the ground, the dew. And I had never in my, just never in my earthly existence, I had never thought, a farmer would be praying for a good dew. Well, where we're from, it's so dry. A good dew can make a difference. And so if you've ever been out in the early morning hours and you walk through uh, the pasture, you walk through your grass, your feet get wet, it's because there's water on the grass. It's called dew. But this miraculous thing happens every day. The sun comes out, and what happens? The dew burns off. It, it, we would say it just it burns off. Um, a good shepherd, a good shepherd will, will not wait till midday to get their flock up on their feet and get them out into the pasture and try to find water in the heat of the day. A good shepherd will get their sheep up early in the morning before the sun rises while that dew is still uh, wet on the ground and they'll get their sheep into the pasture and have them eat that grass. And I'm, I, in my reading, I've learned that if, if the sheep get enough wet grass from the dew in the morning, they can go the whole day without even needing a drink of water. Isn't that amazing? Now, I'm not a morning person, but we got to make an application. Anybody here a morning person? Brother Wayne, I mean, he has to be. He's up at like 3 in the morning or some. Uh, some days I'm going to bed when you're waking up, brother. I just, <laughs> I'm just the opposite. But I've never been a morning person. I'm always jealous of morning people. I, I want to be a morning person. I try to be. And it's funny, if I'm going fishing or hunting, all of a sudden I'm a morning person. Um, I can get up real easy. On Sunday mornings, by the way, I pop up because I'm excited about the day. I, 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 those are the days where I am a morning person. But Monday morning, uh, you text me at 6 a.m., you're probably going to get a response about 7.30. It's just the way it is. I'm just not a morning person. And so I have to have my brain has to wake up and a few little bit of caffeine run through the thing and all that. And then I'll, I'll get back to you. But I love, I love morning people. I feel like they get so much done before any of us ever, you know, like open our eyes. And I've always wanted to be there. But I will say this. There's something about this morning dew 
in the Christian life that we need to understand. There is nothing like getting up in the morning before all the noise begins and before all the hustle and bustle of the day. We can say it like this, before the sun comes up and burns off the dew, there's sustenance to be had in the early morning. You ever gotten up with the Lord and, and uh, you know, you got, you got up and, and you know, you, you, you got with, with the Lord, you got your Bible out, you had some time in prayer before uh, there was a peep in the house, the kids are still asleep and, and everything's still quiet. I'm telling you, the Lord can speak to our hearts in a special way in this time of the day like no other time of the day. He can do that. Um, I, I, I love being able to get up and, and, and the, well, here, let me say it the other way. You, you ever, I know you have, you ever thought, man, I should read my Bible, but then the to-do list pops into your head and you know there's already all these things you got to do for the day. And you're thinking, you know, I'll just knock out a couple of items real quick. You know what happens next? The day's over. <laughs> and, and you're like, when, where did my Bible reading go? Um, let me say it, morning people or not, for the Christian, there's no better time to receive God's word than in the early morning. There's biblical evidence of this. Mark chapter 1 and verse 35, Jesus gives us an example. It says, in the morning, rising up a great while before the day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. By the way, that was his way. That's what he did. We, there's many examples of that in the Gospels. There's other examples in scriptures. In Job chapter 1 and verse 5, it says, And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. The Bible says he got up in the early morning and he uh, sought the Lord. Psalm 5 and verse 3, the psalmist says to God, It's such a beautiful passage. My voice shalt thou hear in the morning. Did you know this? God wants to hear your voice in the morning. Isn't that something? The God of the universe wants to hear your voice in the morning. Oh, Lord, in the morning I will direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. Psalm 143 and verse 8. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning. For in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk. For I lift up my soul unto thee. I know some in here are saying, you know, I'm not a morning person either. I'm not saying you got to get up at 3 a.m. I'm just saying before you get your day started and before the, the, the to-do list starts getting going in your mind and before it's time to, you know, get kids ready for school and, and br make sure kids got teeth brushed and, and, and you know, the, all the banging and clanging that goes on in the morning, getting ready for work or whatever your routine is, before you do that, you need to spend time with the Lord because once the sun comes up, the dew is gone. The second source of water are natural sources, natural sources. So we might say like rivers and streams and, and ponds, and, uh, springs, things like that. You can be sure that a good shepherd would know the landscape. He would know everywhere that uh, one of these streams, one of these sources would be found. Um, it, it was really neat when I was in Israel. I um, got to go to the area of En Gedi where David ran from Saul, and uh, in that area, there, there, there's, it's just this barren, just nothing. You know why they stoned people a lot in the Bible? Because there's lots of stones over there. It's just the easiest weapon available, I think. I mean, there's just rocks everywhere. And, and so all amongst these rocks, every now and then, there'd just be a little trickle of water coming out, and it'd, it'd go into this little clear pool, and uh, you, you, you just think, you know David probably drank out of this. Because, I mean, there's no other water for... For, well, I don't see any water for a long time. He would have known everywhere there was water. He would have known where to go for that sustenance, those natural sources of water. Um, sheep are, are, are good routine animals. They'll get into a routine, so shepherds will take them routinely to the same spring, to the same river, where they're comfortable and they know the surroundings and, and, and where they know the water is good. And they'll, they'll continuously take them there to the stream in a timely manner. They'll, they'll get used to the path. They'll even have paths worn in where they'll head to their water sources. There's that old saying, you can lead a horse to water. What, what's the rest of it? Can't make them drink. It is true. God has provided an unending supply of water. It's right here. 
The question is, do we drink of it? Do we drink of it? See, I can lead a horse. Well, he called me a horse. Well, sorry. You can, <laughs> you can lead a person to the Word, but you can't make them drink. Um, the shepherd's responsibility is to lead the sheep to the stream in a timely manner, and, and, and he does that. We, we have the water of the Word. Many Christians are walking around literally parched, thirsting to death, trying to, to fill the void with everything else in their life, all the while their Bible's sitting somewhere in their house or on their counter or on their nightstand collecting dust. I, I had so many people over the years that would say, I just am not hearing from the Lord. How do I know what the Lord is saying to me? And I'm like, he, he said a whole lot right here. Now, does he speak to us in our heart? Does he lead us by the Spirit? Absolutely, he does. But can I tell you, those happen after we listen to him here. Those things happen after. I'm not going to hear from the Spirit of God if I'm not first hearing from the written Word of God. This is one of those natural sources of water. When we're faithful to our Bible reading time, when we're faithful, it encourages me greatly to hear uh, some folks this year that are, that are starting to, to read their Bibles. And maybe you've done it for the last uh, 30 years. I don't know. I don't care. I'm just glad you're doing it now. It's a great thing. It's exciting to me that people are getting into the Word of God, and we ought to make this a habit, something that, you know, we, we, we know the way to the water. We're comfortable with the, the way to the water. We, we've been there before. We know how to go to God's Word and to get nourished. See, the, the shepherd is a, he leads us. I, I could give you examples. I won't give you an example tonight, but I could give you many examples where, um, and I, I bet you could also give example, but I, I could give you examples where I'm just, I'm just reading through a plan. You know, um, right now I'm reading through a, a, a plan. You know, you say, what are you reading? I'm just, I'm just working through a plan of, of Bible reading this year. And so as I'm reading, I'm not really thinking, what do I need today? Well, let me get my concordance and look up that word, and I'll read that. Now, is, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just telling you, that's not what I'm doing right now. I'm, I'm just reading one chapter after the other. So many times when my heart is burdened with a certain something, and I need some bit of advice. I need, I need just a little bit of encouragement in this area of my life. Or maybe it is that I need some conviction. Or, or maybe it is I just need the Lord to, to make something clear to me. It's amazing to me when I open up my Bible and I'm reading some chapter in Leviticus and the Lord speaks to my heart. And, and, and it's like, I couldn't have picked out this chapter if I tried. And the Lord speaks to my heart. I said I wouldn't give you an example, but I lied. I'm going to tell you one. I, 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 know, I know we're always pressed for time, but I, just this happens. If we're just faithful, if we're just like, I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to give myself, I'm going to make this habit of reading, I'm going to make this habit of praying, what happens is God knows how to lead us to water. He knows how to lead us to the, the stream that we need. Years ago, I... I uh, we were having a service, and it was a, uh, it was a really neat service. We had, uh, has anyone in here heard of Hope Children's Home? Uh, Hope Children's Home is a children's home that they rescue children, but it's a, it's a Baptist organization. It's just a, it's just a wonderful uh, ministry. So many children saved over the years. Not literally saved out of homes, but soul saved. And, and they, they keep the kids from, I mean, from infant to, through college. They'll, they'll work with these kids and they came to our church and, and they got up and they sang and, and then Brother Higgins preached. And it was just this, this awesome service. And as a pastor, I was very discouraged that night because we had a really low attendance. Like, I mean, our average attendance, it was like a quarter of that that night. And, and um, we had, you know, very few, just a handful of people there. And I just remember sitting there thinking, everyone is like, the stream is flowing, and no one's getting it because they're not here. And boy, I was discouraged. And honestly, I just this is why I said I wasn't going to tell you because I'm telling on myself. Honestly, I got a little bit upset about it. And I'm thinking, where was so and so? Where was so and so? Where was so and so? And that next morning, I, I got up and I just, you know, I didn't even feel like reading my Bible because I thought, 
you know. You ever been there? But I got my Bible out, and guess what? I remember I was in Nehemiah, and I, I just started reading. And I'm telling you, the Lord, um, He just absolutely convicted me. I mean, He just He gave me encouragement. He, he strengthened me. He, he helped me to understand. He, he, I mean, I'm just telling you, He led me just, just by faithfully, just, getting, just opening the book, not, not looking for something, not just opening the book and reading. He gave me what I needed that morning. He encouraged me. You know what, right then, all the frustration and all that, it went away. Now, my heart still hurt because so many missed a blessing. But, but all the frustration went away. That love of the pastor came back, and boy, you just got to keep, keep working on them. You just got to keep loving them. And, uh, and by the way, they all had places. That, like, no one was like, I don't want to come to church. They were just, it was just one of those nights, you know. We'll have some here, too, where just, just people have things going on, and it's a natural thing of life. No one was just gone because of any bad reason. But again, just going to the Bible the Lord brought me to a stream. He's done it hundreds of times in my life. In fact, it ought to happen every single morning. Let's talk about the third one. It's the, it's, I call this the hand dug. I don't know if it should be hand dug or hand digged. You make that decision and mark whatever you want on your notes. I put hand dug wells. Wells in the Bible were especially valuable. Um, if you could imagine getting a shovel because they didn't have excavators. Getting a shovel or a stick or whatever they used and going out here in the back and digging until you hit water. That's a lot of work, isn't it? I mean, that is time. That's energy. I'm thankful for those big cat tractors that make it a whole lot. Of, actually, they just drill it these days. You don't even have to, to excavate. And so, um, But just think of the time and energy that went into these wells in the Old Testament where they would bring a flock to water. They were so valuable that they, there were wars fought over the wells. There were battles fought over the wells. We read in Genesis about Isaac having to go back and open up his father's wells that, that these other people of the land had taken over and covered. In Genesis 28 and verse 18, Isaac digged again the wells of water which were digged in the days of Abraham his father for the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. In Exodus, we have the story of Moses. We'll read it in a couple of weeks in Sunday mornings when when, um, actually, we're going to read it this Sunday, now that I'm thinking about it. We're going to read it this Sunday, where, where, where Moses is fleeing from Pharaoh, and he goes and he, he sits down by a well, and, and what is he, when he looks up, he sees that the shepherds are striving over this well, because it's very valuable. In um, John chapter 4, Jesus finds Jacob's well and sits on it, and, and begins to preach and teach from that well. That's a well that had been, been uh, dug years and I mean thousands of years before it's still being used turn if you will to Ephesians 4 so we got the we got the the dew on the grass right that's the one source of water it's the early morning it's a quiet time with the Lord we've got the the natural sources just the habits of life like reading our Bible and having a prayer time and 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 knowing where to go to, to get sustenance now the hand dug wells Let me give you some examples. Ephesians 4. These wells are, we could say this, now they're God-given, but they're a man-made place of refreshment. They take time and they take labor to have available. Here are some of those wells. Look in, did I tell you Ephesians 4? Okay, good. Go to verse um, 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Why did he give those? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So, so pause for a second. I want to read down through verse 15, but pause for a second. Um, the Lord gave some of these people, and, and I'm a pastor, I'm, I'm one, and, and I'm not here to preach about how I'm just this big gift, okay? So let's get over that. I'm not doing that. But I, but I, I want you to see the, the truth that is here. 
All right, and so the Lord has given some of these to the church. Why? For the perfecting of the saints. That's the growth, the maturing of the saints. Um, the, these people are instrumental in our lives to help us to grow for the work of the ministry, the edifying or the building up of the body of Christ. Till we all come into the unity of the faith and knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no, no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men. So you see, the, the purpose of, of these uh, and the work of these is that we would grow, that we wouldn't be children, that we wouldn't be tossed to and fro. Uh, verse 15, but speaking the truth in love, we may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Now, I, I, I struggle when I preach um, a point like this because I feel like it's a, little bit, it's a little bit like I'm talking about myself, and I don't mean to. But you understand when a, when a preacher preaches a message, that's a hand dug well. So what you hear in 30 minutes at church may have taken 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 hours to develop. There, there's a lot of time that goes into the study of the Word of God. And, and, and so, so what we get is, and I, I got to go to that, that meeting in Oklahoma a few weeks ago, and I got to partake of some hand-dug wells. And so what I'm getting is like, have you ever heard the expression drinking from a fire hose? As a, as a person sitting in the pew, that's what I'm doing. Because they've done all this work and they've compiled it and they've, they've, they've studied it, they've put it together, and now they're preaching it to me in compact form in 30 minutes. And I'm taking it in. That's another source of water. That's another place where we can, we can drink from a well that someone has labored for. Um, again, I, I, I feel like I'm going too long. The, um, when we have revival meeting this year, someone's going to dig a well that week. And we're going to come to the well, and we're going to have an opportunity to drink of that well. I encourage you to be here. I'm, as a pastor, I look around every time the Word of God's being preached. I just want everyone to be there where they can hear what, what the Lord is saying through His Word. When we have a missions conference, revivals, church, uh, you know, ladies' retreats, men's retreats, anytime the Word of God is open, there's a well there to drink out of. It's another source where we can be sustained. So very practically then, um, we have the morning dew, let me ask you do, you, do you, do you save your mornings for the Lord? Do you put the Lord first in your day? We have the rivers and streams. Do you have a habit of returning to God's word where you know you're fed, where you know you're well watered? Do you have that habit in your life? Number three, do you visit the hand dug wells? You're like, we're, you're preaching to the Wednesday night crowd. Amen. You're here. But I'm telling you, faithfulness to those three sources of water gives us life. It gives us spiritual life. It, fu it, it fills the void in our life that we're searching to fill everywhere else. And so, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Next week, he restoreth my soul. I can't wait to show you a video of a sheep that needs to be restored. Uh, you'll enjoy it. All right, we're going to uh, pray. And actually, no, let's do this. We'll pray in a second. Let's take our prayer list. We'll stop right there for this, for this evening. And uh, we'll take your prayer list out there. And um, I did go a little longer 